Okay, so far we've been talking about data in terms of only one variable. Uh, we've been talking about univariate data. We were looking at mean, median, and mode. We'll have a group of data and we're finding some measures of center and we're finding measures of spread. But really it's all been for one variable, one thing at a time. Okay, that's what univariate data is, one variable. Okay, so we're about to start to talk about bivariate data. Now, you could probably apply some of your understanding about the way that English works. Um, uni means one, bi means, well, two. So we're starting to talk about two sets of variables for each set of data. So a great example is just a person's weight and height, right? So we could have two pieces of data that we need to think about. So we need to understand a couple of things about these bits of data. Firstly, if we have two bits of data that we're looking at, one generally is what's known as the dependent variable, and the other is the independent variable. Now, the, which one is which matters a lot. Think about it in terms of, um, can you live by yourself like an adult? Uh, if you're an adult and you earn your own money and you choose your own future, right? you are independent of anyone else. You're doing your own thing. Um, if you have dependents, however, as an adult, that means you have children who depend on you. Okay, So as you make a change, just say I decide to move to Kilkeven, right? uh, my children will come with me to Kilkeven. They are dependent on what I, the independent, that's, it, it depends on what I do. Okay, so in every set of pair of variables that we have for each bit of data, one is the dependent, one is the independent. So how do you know which is which? Well, if we get given information in form of tables of data, um, now it does matter if how it's arranged, um, if it's in a rows like uh, this one right here, then we have the top row is generally the X value for when we're graphing information. The bottom row is generally the Y value for the information. Now the top row, it is the independent. If our table of information is in columns, like this one over here, it'll be the first column that is our independent, which obviously means that the second row and the second column are the dependent. So as we're graphing things, you will see that the x-axis will show the independent variable and the y-axis will show the dependent variable. Okay, so uh, bivariate data then is important to know about. Now as we're graphing these things, we can actually start to identify relationships that exist within that data. Okay, now first and foremost, we can say that there is a relationship between data, big green tick, or there is no relationship, big red X. Okay, so every set of data, okay, we can choose whether it is in a relationship or if it is not in a relationship. Now, there are classifications for these relationships, okay, which we'll go through now. Uh, we can have direction of data. So the relationship can be in a direction. Um, for example, we can have a positive direction for our relationship. So as one variable increases, the other also increases. Here's my x-axis, my independent, my y-axis, my dependent. And you'll see that my data here is traveling upwards in both directions. As the independent is increasing, my dependent is increasing, this is a positive direction. This little graph underneath it, as you see, my independent is increasing, my dependent is decreasing. This is a negative direction. So as one is increasing, the other is decreasing. Okay, the form is also important when we're talking about these relationships between um, these two variables by variate data. They can be linear, which is just a straight line, or they can be nonlinear, which is curves. Okay, but we'll talk more about that one in a second. 
Um, they also can be strong, medium, or weak in terms of how the the how close the relationship is. Um, so if we have a look at these three little graphs here, um, I can kind of have a bit of a guess in terms of where this like if this is the direction that this is heading in you can see that all of those dots are very close to that red line that I put in it's a very strong relationship between the dependent and the independent they're very closely related whereas this one over here you'll see that as I put in that same line that there's some more distance away from that line and this one there's even more distance again so the further the points are away from that line of best fit that we'll talk more about in the future uh, that regression line um, as they get further and further away from that it shows a, a weakening of the relationship between the independent and the dependent variable okay so what we would do is we would say for uh, this one here this would be strong this one would be a medium example and this one would be weak that's, that's some weak correlation there some weak relationship between those now there's one last one that I'd like to talk about as well in the end of this uh, and that is a graph that would look a bit like that well there's no real association between the two variables here there's no pattern there's no relationship so what we would say is that there's no real association that it that there's nothing really going on there at all okay 